Welcome to semester test one preparation and in this lesson we are going to look at series and parallel circuit. We are going to look at this question together. This question is a combination of a series circuit and a parallel circuit. So the question says use Ohm's law to calculate the voltage and the current for each resistor. So we need to look at this circuit and we need to work out the current for each resistors as well as the voltages. So now this is a very big circuit. But firstly, let's analyze it and then we'll start to solve the problem. So over here, we say at the center, we have our voltage source or battery. Now the current is going to come out of the positive terminals, which is the long one. So the current that is coming out of the positive terminal, let's call that I, current I. Current I will get to this junction, to this node, and when it gets there, it's going to split into current I1, and let's say this is current I2. I'm just numbering or naming our currents at this point. Now let's follow I1. I1 is going to continue this way, and then when it gets to this junction, it will have to separate itself to maybe I3, and let's say I4. Now I3 will continue to pass through resistor uh, resistor the one ohm resistor as well as the seven ohm resistor so now because the one ohm resistor as well as the seven ohm resistor share i3 well i3 is passing through both resistors we'll say that those two are actually in series okay so now we continue we say well i3 is gonna continue this way while i4 passes through here and the two currents are gonna rejoin now because I3 and I4 are currents coming from I1. So they are they are I1 when I1 splits. We'll say that the whole the whole section over here is going to be parallel to this. So when I add the 1 ohm resistor as well as the 7 ohm resistor, that's going to be parallel to the 4 ohm resistor. So let's make sure we understand that. So then now we need to continue with the current and follow the current. They say that after they rejoin, they're going to form current I1. And current I1 is going to return back to the battery. Now let's follow I2. I2 is going to pass through this 2 ohm resistor. And when it gets to this junction, it will have to separate itself into maybe, let's say, I5 as well as I6. Now I6 is going to continue this way until it rejoins I5 over here. Now, because I6 and I5 are split current from I2 and they rejoin on the other side, passing through, well, I6 is passing through the 6 ohm resistor as well as I5 is passing through the 3 ohm resistor, we'll say that this section and that section are gonna be parallel. All right, so let's just remove this and not make our diagram too unneat okay so now i6 and i5 are going to combine and they're going to form again i2 and i2 is going to rejoin i1 at this junction over here that means that this whole section is parallel to the whole section over here so those are actually parallel to each other so now that we understand how the circuit actually looks like, we can actually start uh, answering the questions. The very first thing I'll do is I'll try to simplify the circuit. So when I simplify the circuit, I notice that the 6 ohm resistor as well as the 3 ohm resistor are in parallel. So I can add those. And the way I add them is I will say, well, R parallel. For that section is going to be uh well one over six plus one over three well one over pair one over r parallel is equal to that and then when we put this into the calculator and flip it over well let's just do it so i'm going to put in um one over six plus one over three and we're going to get our answer then i'm going to take my answer 
and flip it over to get 2. So R parallel is going to be now 2 ohms. And then when I add these two resistors, I will get 8 ohms because they are in series. Now let's add that 8 ohms together with that resistor, the 4 ohm resistor. So those are going to be in parallel as we have analyzed. So 1 over R parallel is going to be uh, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8. So R parallel for that section is going to give us, well, let's just put it into the calculator. So we say, well, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 gives us 3 and uh, 8 over 3. Well, 3 over 8. So if we flip this, we get 3 over well 8 over 30 so this is 2 point uh let's make it 2.67 so 2.67 ohms for that section now for this section i already i only added the 6 ohms as well as the 3 ohms we want to add it together with the 2 ohms now the 2 ohms is in series with the parallel circuit so well this section, I'm going to say the resistors are going to be 2 plus 2, which gives us 4 ohms. And for the other section, the resistors are going to be 2.67 ohms. All right. So now let's redraw our circuit. So when I redraw my circuit, I will say, well, in the middle, we still have our battery at 12 volts. And we still have our current I. But this section has been simplified to one resistor. And that resistor is 4 ohms. This section has been simplified to one resistor. And that resistor is going to be 2.67 ohms. That's what we have now. Now, I still splits to current I2 and current uh, I1. As we have said here at the top. So, with this now. I understand that if these are now in parallel, the voltage across here and the voltage across there are going to be the same and they're both going to be uh, 12 volts. So let me, let me now find current I2. So I'll say I2 is equal to, well, we take it from Ohm's law, R is equal to V over I. So that means that I is equal to V over R. Now, to find I2, I know the voltage is 12, and I'm going to use this resistor because I2 is passing through that resistor, which is 4. So I2 is going to be 3 amperes. Now, for I1, I'm going to say V is equal to, uh, I1 is equal to V over R, and it's going to be 12 over 2.67. Now I'm going to have to put this into the calculator. Now into the calculator, we need to substitute um, that we have 12 over 2.67. 2.67, and it gives us a final answer of 4.49. So let's write down that this is going to be 4.49 or the current that will be passing through this section. So that's I1. Now that we have uh, I2 and I1, we can actually go back to the original circuit and we can start calculating stuff. We saw that I2 is going to be passing through the 2 ohm resistor. So we already have the current passing through the 2 ohm resistor. And we know that it's going to split into I6 as well as I5. So if I want to calculate I6 and I5, I need to use the current divider. And we'll calculate it here by the side. We say I6 is equal to I2, the current that is being splitted, right? So the current that is splitting is I2, and we said I2 is actually 3, 3 amperes. 
So I6 is equal to 3. Multiply the bracket off. I6 is passing through the 6 ohm resistor. So I need to, to I need to take the 3 ohm resistor at the top. And I'm going to divide that by the sum of the two resistors, which is 3 plus 6. And this will help me to find I6. All right, so uh, this is then going to be 9 over 9. So I6 is going to be 1. Now, I don't even have to use the current divider uh, for I5 because I know I2 is going to split into, well, I6 and I5. If I6 is 1 amperes, I5 is going to be 2 amperes. So we already found the current flowing through 6 ohms and the current flowing through uh, 3 ohms. Now let's go over to the next section. On the right, we have that I1 is going to split into I3 and I4. We're going to have to calculate uh, what those are going to be. So I'm going to calculate I3 first. All right, let's just clear up some space here. Well, when we calculate, well, let's say I3, I3 is going to be I1. I1, we said, is 4.49. So we say 4.49, that's going to be multiplying. Well, I3 passes through the 1 ohm and the 7 ohm. So we need to take the 4 ohm at the top, and then we divide by the sum of all the resistors, which is the 4 ohm plus the 1 ohm plus the 7 ohm. So now we have to uh, put this into the calculator. Into the calculator, we're going to put... 4.49 to the power of 4. Oh, well, not the numerator is 4. And then we say, well, that is going to be 4 plus 1 plus 7 at the bottom. And that's going to give us 1.5. Right. So we round it off to two decimals and we say I3 is now 1.5. So if I3 is 1.5, we know that I4 is going to be 4.49 minus 1.5. So we find I4 as going to be, we say 4.49 subtracted by 1.5. And that's going to give us 2.99. So 2.99 is what our I4 is going to be. So now we have found all the currents passing through all the resistors. It's time for us to calculate the voltages. All right, so let's just clear up some space here and let's do everything over here by this section. All right, so now if you want to calculate the voltages, we're going to use, uh, we are going to use Ohm's law. If you have the current and you have the resistance, then you can calculate the voltage. All right, so let's do it together. I will say that the voltage across the two ohms, the voltage across the two ohms, that is going to be the current, which is I2 of three, three amperes and two ohms. That is going to be six volts. Well, since we have that that is going to be 6 volts and the whole thing is actually going to be 12 volts, so the voltage across the 6 must be 12 volts and that must be 12 volts as well. But let's calculate it. Say voltage across the 6 is going to be I6 and I6 we have already calculated to be, well, I removed that. All right. But uh, if I recall, we said it's 1. We said it's 1 and then the resistance is 6. So this is equal to 6 volt. And we say the voltage across the 3 ohms, we said that is 2, and that's going to be um, 2 times 3, and that's going to be 6 volts. So as we said, if this voltage is then 6 volts, so this must be 6 volts as well, because I need to add to give you 12. So not 12 volt there. Made a mistake. All right. So um, this other section, 
we want to find out the voltage across the 1 ohm. So we say the voltage across the 1 ohm resistor is going to be I3 and I3 is 1.5. Multiply 1 and that's going to be 1.5 volt. And the voltage across the 7 ohm resistor is going to be I3 times, well, 7. And that's, uh, let's just do that. If we say 1.5 times 7, 1.5 times 7, we get, well, 10.5. Uh, so that's going to be 10.5. 10.5 volt. And then we say V4 is going to be I4, which is 2.99, multiplied by 4. And that's going to give us a final answer of 2.99 multiplied by 4. And that's going to give us 11.96. So that's going to be 11.96 volts. And that's how you solve this question.